Now let me tell you something. My story is pretty well known now. But I was pregnant, I was miscarrying, I was bleeding. If I had to go from one hospital to the next trying to find one emergency room that would take me in, who knows if I would even be here today. Congresswoman Jackie Speer of California uh, speaking in 2011, telling her own personal story of having a terrible miscarriage. She's telling that story during the congressional debate over one of the dozens of anti-abortion bills put forward by Republicans that year. And over these past few years, as Republican legislators, not just in Washington, but around the country, as they have pursued a record number pullbacks to abortion rights as Republicans have become super aggressive on anti-abortion and even anti-contraception legislation over these past three years. The other legislative phenomenon that has gone along with that is women legislators starting to tell very, very personal stories in legislatures in a public context, trying to hold off these new restrictions by talking about what they themselves have been through as women. Lawmakers taking the kind of risk that Congresswoman Jackie Speer took in Congress. More often, though, it's happening in the states. In January of this year, a Republican state legislator in Wyoming told her story in the legislature about her experience of having had, to, uh, of having had an abortion. In Wisconsin, in June, a Democratic state rep named Mandy Wright, she began her remarks on the House floor by apologizing to her mom and dad for the story that she was about to have to tell. I was eight years old, visiting the family farm, and uh, my cousin raped me repeatedly, several times. The only reason it stopped is because my father found us. My parents protected me, and they made good decisions on my behalf. And I am a whole person because of the love and care of my parents and my faith community and the counseling that I was able to receive individually and with my family. And that should have been kept private. But because of this bill, I need to tell this story. Because of this bill, which in Wisconsin there was a mandatory ultrasound bill. Because of this bill, I need to tell this story. This is a new phenomenon in our politics. In state after state, and sometimes in Congress, women lawmakers deciding to tell these incredibly personal stories. And you can tell they do not want to be telling these stories, but they say they feel compelled to do this because of Republicans pushing so hard against reproductive rights now, both in Washington, D.C. and in the states. Well, yesterday in Michigan, Republican legislators passed a bill that makes it so that your normal private health insurance cannot cover your abortion. Instead, you have to buy separate insurance just for abortion coverage ahead of time. As if people ever plan on having an abortion and so they buy abortion insurance. Abortion insurance, it should be noted, does not exist. It's required now by what Michigan just passed if you want to have your abortion covered by insurance, but insurance companies don't offer those kinds of policies. If those policies did exist, by their nature, you couldn't buy them once you were already pregnant, right? So the Republican idea here is that women should not be allowed to have their reproductive health care covered like other health care. Women should have to pay, specially in advance, by planning ahead for unplanned pregnancy, including planning ahead for the possibility that you might get pregnant through rape. Even a woman who wants an abortion because she has been raped, Michigan Republicans say it should be illegal for the rape victim's insurance to cover an abortion. She has to pay cash. Which is why, in Michigan, opponents of this new law are calling this the rape insurance law. It was a point made yesterday by the Democratic leader in the Michigan Senate, Gretchen Whitmer. I think the fact that rape insurance is even being discussed by this body is repulsive. And for those of you who want to act aghast that I'd use a term like rape insurance to describe the proposal here in front of us, you should be even more offended that it's absolutely accurate description of what this proposal requires. This tells women that were raped and became pregnant that they should have thought ahead and bought special insurance for it. By moving forward on this initiative, Senate Republicans want to essentially require Michigan women to plan ahead and financially invest in health care coverage for potentially having their bodies violated and assaulted. And she was just getting going. 
The stunning turn in Senator Whitmer's floor speech happened when she decided essentially to set aside her prepared remarks and to tell her own very personal story. So I'm about to tell you something that I've not shared with many people in my life. But over 20 years ago, I was a victim of rape. And thank God it didn't result in a pregnancy. Because I can't imagine going through what I went through and then having to consider what to do about an unwanted pregnancy from an attacker. And as a mother with two girls, the thought that they would ever go through something like I did keeps me up at night. I thought this was all behind me. You know how tough I can be. The thought and the memory of that still haunts me. If this were law then, and I had become pregnant, I would not be able to have coverage because of this. How extreme, how extreme does this measure need to be? I'm not the only woman in our state that has faced that horrible circumstance. I am not enjoying talking about it. It's something I've hidden for a long time. But I think you need to see the face of the women that you are impacting by this vote today. I think you need to think of the girls that we are raising and what kind of a state we want to be where you would put your approval on something this extreme. After she gave a remarkable speech yesterday in the Michigan Senate, Senator Gretchen Whitmer says she called her father right away because she had never told him that story before she said it last night on the Senate floor. And she wanted him to hear it from her.